In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can get wicked fast keyboard cursor movement by changing the key repeat speed on your Mac. Now, for those of you that are designers and developers and who type a lot on a regular basis, you know that a lot of your productivity comes from how fast you can move around your document and how fast you can rattle off various keyboard commands. And the key repeat speed has a big impact on that speed. So key repeat, in a nutshell, is if I hold down the right arrow key, how long before another right arrow key fires off? And it's not just for the right arrow key, and it's not just for VS Code, which is the program I'm showing now. It's for anything that's running on your MacBook, any keyboard command that you're running. So if I'm holding Option to switch between words, or I'm doing Command-Z to undo, um, it affects all of those things. So any keyboard command that you're running on any program on your Mac. So with that description out of the way, let's go ahead and look at how we can update this speed. Now the easiest way is to go to your keyboard settings on your Mac. Now I'm using Spotlight to pull that up, but if you pull up your system preferences and click on the keyboard icon, you can get to the same spot. Now the key repeat is what I already discussed, and the delay until repeat is how long after you initially press and hold a key before it starts to actually execute that repeat. Now this interface is great for most users. It allows you to hold and drag these sliders around for various speeds on your key repeat and that delay until repeat. But there are a couple of problems with this interface. One, it gives you these various spots on this little uh, slider, but there are various values in between these spots that you can set it to and you might want more refined control, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. And the other problem is that it limits you off at fast over here for key repeat and short over here for the delay until repeat, but there are technically faster options. There is stuff that's off of these charts that we can actually set it to to get to that top tier of speed. And so that's what I'll be showing you how to do next. Now the way that we can do that is by pulling up the terminal. Now the terminal is just an application on your Mac. Uh, it looks like this with the white background, but I prefer one called iTerm, uh, which is a separate application you can install. They basically do the same thing. This is just my preference. Now the terminal, for those of you that are not developers, uh, it might seem a little bit scary at first, but basically you just type in commands and you can change various settings or create folders or do other things around your Mac. Now of course I will have all of the commands that we're typing in in the description down below. So the main command we'll be using is called defaults, which allows you to update default properties on your Mac. And then we'll follow that with either read, write, or delete, depending on what you actually want to do with that value. So we'll be doing this globally, so we'll pass a dash G, and then the last piece is key repeat which is the value we're trying to update. Now you'll see if you hit enter, uh, instead of giving back a current value, it says that the domain slash default pair of key repeat does not exist. And this is expected because we haven't set a custom value before. Even if you've updated and changed it in your system preferences, this is separate, uh, so you'll get that error back. So let's go ahead and actually write a custom value to it. So if I use the same command from last time and change read to write, and then I pass it an integer, which is basically just a number, uh, we can pass it something like a six. Now a six is the default for Mac High Sierra if you were to have just installed it and not done anything. So if you ever wanted to set it back to the default, you can put it at a six. Uh, the lowest that it can go inside of system preferences is a two, but if you want that ludicrous speed, I recommend setting it down to a one, which is what I generally run my MacBook on. So if I hit enter and then I go back and read the key repeat again, you'll see that now it's been set to a one and we don't get that error anymore. Now it's worth noting at this point that you do have to restart your Mac or you have to go up to uh, the Apple and go down to log out and log back in uh, in order for these changes to actually take effect. So I'll be doing that in a second so you can see what the speed looks like. Uh, but remember that this hasn't been updated yet. You actually have to do that restart for it to take effect. Now the other piece that we want to try reading um, is that initial key repeat. Of course, we don't have an initial value because we haven't set a custom value before. And we'll want to change read to write, pass it an integer. And in this case, the default for Mac High Sierra is 25. Now I actually like setting it on 25, so I'm just going to go ahead and write that um, as my value. Now I don't recommend going lower than 10, even though you can go lower than that, because I found that uh, I'll just press a key and it'll think that I want to have it repeat and it will give me some um, unintended uh, consequences of having my speed that quick. So I generally like it at 25, but again, it's personal preference, so go ahead and set it to whatever you want. So at this point, these should be set, so I just need to restart my computer. I'll log out and log back in, and I'll see you in a second. All right, so I've logged out and logged back in. Let's see how fast this is. If I hold down the right arrow key, you can see that we now have wicked fast keyboard cursor movement. Now, it may take some time to actually get accustomed to this, but I guarantee once you do, your productivity will increase. Now, it's also worth noting that, again, this happens for other programs as well. So in Terminal, where it's harder to jump around between words, this can be a huge time saver. So make sure and leave in the comments down below what you think of this, uh, what your settings are, how fast you like your cursor. I thought that this was definitely something that helped my productivity and that I use on a daily 
daily basis, so I just wanted to share it with you. Again, make sure and subscribe, rate, and comment, and I'll see you in the next video.